uh, I would now like to provide an assessment of uh, the growth and inflation scenario to begin with global growth. Let me turn to a detailed assessment of the growth and inflation dynamics starting with the external environment. As I just mentioned, the global economy is slowing under the impact of tight financial conditions, protracted geopolitical tensions and increasing geoeconomic fragmentation. Global trade is contracting. Headline inflation is easing but rules above the target in major economies. Headline, uh, while major central banks are signaling a peaking of their rate hike cycle, there are indications that the tight monetary policy stance could persist for longer than anticipated earlier. Sovereign bond yields have firmed up, the US dollar has appreciated, and global equity markets have corrected. Coming to domestic, uh, domestic growth, in contrast to global trends, domestic economic activity exhibits resilience on the, bank of, on the back of strong demand, that is strong domestic demand. The momentum in agricultural activity in the second quarter of this financial year, that is 23-24, has been sustained, although the monsoon has been somewhat uneven. The acreage under Kharif crops as on September 29 was 0.2% above the last year's level. The industrial sector extended recovery in the second quarter. Manufacturing sector gained ground in July and August, supported by key sectors such as pharmaceuticals, basic metals, cement, motor vehicles, and food products and beverages. The Purchasing Managers Index, that is PMI for manufacturing, remained robust in September also. Services sector activity is maintaining buoyancy as indicated by healthy expansion in high frequency indicators in August and September. PMI services, the data of which was just released yesterday, has exhibited strong expansion in September. Construction activity continues to be strong. Investment activity maintained its momentum with good support from government capex. Private sector capex is gaining ground as suggested by expansion in production and imports of capital goods and new projects sanctioned by the banks. Capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector on a seasonally adjusted basis continued to trend up which augurs well for investment activity. The total flow of resources to the commercial sector from banks and other sources taken together at rupees 10.6 lakh crore during the current financial year so far is higher than that of last year. Merchandise exports and non-oil, non-gold imports, however, contracted though at a moderate though at a moderated pace in August. Services exports expanded at a healthy now, what I have done is, you know, I have given a lot of uh, data points in the footnote of my statement, and uh, those of you who are interested may refer to the statement. So, whatever statement, whatever I am saying here is backed up by, you know, the data points which, uh, which, which would justify the statements that I am making. So, I would suggest that uh, if there is interest, you may refer to the footnotes which are part of my statement. Now, let me move on. On the demand side, Steady expansion is seen in urban consumption, while rural demand is showing signs of revival. Looking ahead, domestic demand conditions are likely to benefit from sustained buoyancy in services, consumer and business optimism, government's continued thrust on capex, healthy balance sheets of banks and corporates, and supply chain normalization. Headwinds from geopolitical tensions and geoeconomic fragmentation, volatility in global financial markets, global economic slowdown, and uneven monsoon, however, pose risks to the outlook. Taking all these factors into consideration, real GDP growth for the current financial year, that is 2023-24, is projected at 6.5%, with Q2 
at 6.5 percent, Q3 at 6 percent, and Q4 at 5.7 percent. The risks are evenly balanced. Real GDP growth for the first quarter of next financial year, that is 24-25, is projected at 6.6 percent. Now, I said that economic activity continues to be resilient, and this is precisely what I was uh, hinting at when I, this is precisely what I was referring to when I said that, please have a look at the footnotes. The data points will justify that statement, why we are saying that economic activity continues to be resilient and why we are projecting the current year GDP growth to be 6.5 percent. 